I just finished inputting some of the vital signs for this week. These are some basic statistics that the Great Plains Conference and the United Methodist Church use to gauge how we're doing at maintaining and growing congregations across our connection. Some people may think this is a mundane task or a waste of time, but think about other organizations you belong to. Don't they measure aspects of their operation to ensure they are hitting goals and fulfilling their mission? Shouldn't the church be concerned about making sure we are reaching the least, the last, and the lost in our effort to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? Data really can help us stay focused on the mission. Counting, measuring, and analyzing data is important for pastors to better understand the health of their congregation and to help determine the benefit of one or more ministries within a church. Data doesn't tell the whole story, but it certainly tells more of a story than guessing. Statistics shed light on circumstances within the church in ways that can help us determine if we are bearing fruit for Christ in our mission field. Data helps us spot trends that either support our assumptions or they help us see that our assumptions are incorrect. Both can help us make wise decisions as we work to be good stewards of the resources we've been given and strive to reach new people for Jesus Christ. It's all about the mission. Now we can measure a lot of things, but if we're honest with ourselves, some statistics are more helpful than others in determining whether or not we are achieving success in our mission. These statistics can help us recognize how well our congregations are doing at the spiritual disciplines required of followers of Christ. With that in mind, the cabinet comprised of the bishop, 12 superintendents, and two of the conference's ministry directors has defined a few metrics we will use in 2019 for vital signs, our weekly data input to help us track these trends in ministry. The numbers are meant to help us stay focused on the mission. First, we'll measure average worship attendance. Worship is vital to the life of a congregation, and worship attendance is, after all, about growing in discipleship. This metric provides a snapshot of how worship attendance is trending over time. For this measurement, include the counts from all regular worship services during a week. And we're talking accurate counts, not estimates. We count people because reaching people is our mission. So what is a regular worship service? It's any service that takes place at any point during the week that includes the expected components for worship. Songs, prayers, scriptures, sermons, offerings, communion. It doesn't matter if it happens on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or any other time of the week. Do not report special services such as Christmas Eve or Good Friday. Those are important holy days that likely will draw large numbers of worshipers, but these numbers tend to prevent us from seeing what is really happening in our churches regarding worship attendance. So let's not skew the numbers by including special services. What if someone attends multiple regular services in a week? Do you count them once, or do you count them for each service they attend? Well, each worship experience provides a chance for an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So the answer to that question is, count the person each time he or she is in attendance. How about children and the nursery? If a child is present in the start of a worship service and then leaves to go to children's church, for example, only count him or her once. But if the child attends two full services, such as a children's church service at one worship time, and sits in the main worship space with a parent at another worship time, then the child should be counted at both worship services. And what about our fun, wintry weather in the Great Plains? What do we do if we have to cancel worship because of snow? If the weather forces a cancellation or if the weather causes a dramatic reduction in the number of people in attendance, leave the number blank for that week. 
It will not be calculated as part of your average. Do not report zero as that will skew the averages. More and more churches are either live streaming their services or are recording them and posting them on their websites or on social media. This 21st century form of evangelism is proving to be very popular, particularly among young adults and people who are church shopping and want to test drive the church before actually attending a worship service. It's also a great way for shut-ins and those who are homebound to be included in the worship experience. One way to acknowledge this growing way of taking part in worship is to measure the number of people who view or listen to these recordings. Please report these numbers separately from your average worship attendance. We want to reserve that metric for the people who are physically in the church building for worship. Consider this group a digital congregation for any given service. But here's a question. How do we decide who is counted and who is not? It's a fair question in an era when Facebook counts a view as anyone who rests on a video on their tablet or phone for more than a few seconds. So to count as an online worship attendee, the person must view the sermon. To count, Churches will have to look at their analytics and determine the timestamps for their pastor's sermons. If the viewer watches the equivalent of at least 75% of the sermon time, then you can count that person. If your analytics don't allow for checking out the time spent, encourage viewers to make a comment sharing something that they learned or will take away from the message. Here's an example. Let's say your service goes for exactly 60 minutes in the recording, and the sermon is from minute 25 to minute 45. That means 75% of the sermon would be achieved at the timestamp of 40 minutes of your 60-minute service. So in your analytics, anyone who watched 40 minutes or more of your video or listened to that duration of an audio recording counts as an online attendee. Counting likes and views from the main page of Facebook, for example, simply isn't enough. We also want you to report the number of Fresh Expressions ministries active in your church. These often are lay-led forms of church for our changing culture established primarily for the benefit of people who are not yet part of our church family. These expressions primarily will take place away from the church's building. These could be regular activities in a restaurant or park, perhaps in a store or civic meeting space, maybe even in bars. The point is that they take place away from the church and are a means of reaching people who would never or would likely never set foot in a church building but who still are open to God doing great things in their lives. For this metric, count the number of Fresh Expressions ministries active in your church in that given week. But since this is a worship experience, the number of people, if this is a weekly gathering, should be counted in the average worship attendance. So, if you have two Fresh Expressions weekly gatherings with 20 people each, you should count 40 people under average worship attendance and would record two in the Fresh Expressions area on Vital Signs. Remember, these metrics are all about the mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. A profession of faith is the first public expression of commitment to Jesus Christ by an individual in which he or she acknowledges the Son of God as his or her Savior. This number includes adults who come to Christ as well as youth who join the church through the confirmation process. Reaffirmations of faith is a public reaffirmation of the baptismal vows by people who have previously been baptized or confirmed. This most often is an individual who joins a local church, but it is not a person who is simply transferring in from another congregation. If you don't have any professions of faith 
in a given week. Be sure to note a zero in the professions of faith area on vital signs. And remember to celebrate the weeks when you do have a number to enter in that category. This metric is a count of the number of small groups active during a week in the church. These are groups that do not fit in the Fresh Expressions ministries, but instead are small groups of people who gather together on a regular basis with the goal of becoming more faithful disciples of Jesus Christ through an intentional process of learning, mutual support, accountability, and service to the world. Some examples are Sunday school classes and youth groups. Some other groups, such as craft groups or running groups, may count as well, as long as they include spiritual formation components, such as Bible study and prayer. These activities fit into our mission. If the group is purely social and has no spiritual formation component, have fun with them, but please do not count them for vital signs. Finally, you're asked to report giving for the week. This is the total offering received in a given week to support the ministries of the church, regardless of which service or activity that money was received. This includes offerings for the regular operating budget, special offerings for particular ministries, capital campaigns, and other forms of designated giving. Please do not include receipts from investments uh, fees for programs such as daycares or after-school programs or fundraisers. These metrics will help our local churches monitor their own progress, both in traditional ways and in newer ways, to work toward fulfilling the mission. These measurements will allow us to see trends that can help us do what Jesus asked us to do. It's all about the mission. It's all about the mission. It's all about the mission, y'all.